saying, remember during the campaign, he said, uh, even, and even before the campaign, he said that we are wasting our money. We should not be buying warships and warplanes because talo na tayo eh. I mean, very if you have that mindset. Very difficulties, yeah. Yeah, very difficulties. But now he has turned around and I'm supportive of that. Uh, I'm very happy now uh, that uh, we have a president who's there to defend the West Philippine Sea, to assert the arbitral award. And uh, of course, there are other issues, uh, but as far as the West Philippines is concerned, I'm happy with what's uh, with our foreign policy right now. Um, and, and speaking of uh, the direction of our foreign policy right now, um, Justice, don't you think that, um, there could be also a problem of overcompensation? Uh, because obviously we're in a catch-up time, right? We're trying to catch up for lahat ng mga kakulangan ng panahon ni Digong, catch up in terms of our defense capability acquisitions. So the counter-argument right now would be maybe Marcos Jr. is overly going into the American camp and perhaps that could be also used by the Americans to push their own agenda in this part of the world. I mean, I know this sounds like, a, you know, the, the usual propaganda from the left or something like that. But I mean, this is the United States after all. It has its own national interests, right? And I think as far as the U.S. is concerned, they want maximal access to Philippine bases, whatever, because they want to protect Taiwan. They want to protect, I don't know, their own forward deployment capabilities in this part of the world. How do we also balance against that potential of overswinging uh, to the other side, and what is your reading of how Marco Jr. has so far been, uh, you know, uh, you know, conducting his foreign policy accordingly? Well, I, I think the the real purpose, uh, the battle in the West Philippine Sea is whether we can get the gas. Uh, at the end of the day, the EEZ is about natural resources. Can you exploit the natural resources in the EZ that belongs to you? So at the end of the day, can we get the gas in Reed Bank? So uh, it's very easy for, uh, we, we, we can send a message to China that we don't, if you don't want the this new Edgar basis, additional Edgar basis to proceed, just don't stop us from getting the gas in Reed Bank. If you don't was don't want us to go close to get closer to the the U.S., don't stop us from getting our what belongs to us. I mean, it, the, I think all that we're doing now is trying to 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 increase our leverage, to build up our leverage and tell China what you're doing is forcing us to go to to get closer to the Americans because we need desperately the gas. It will be terrible for our economy if we have to import LNG. We have, a, that's the Malampai supplies 40% of the energy requirement of Luzon. And if we have to import that, can you just imagine, uh, I'm told by by in industry uh, players that uh, our, 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 our power rates would go up tremendously. We will be, it will be, we will, the, all the foreign investors will leave the country because uh, power is a very large component of uh, operating costs, especially if you are in manufacturing. They will all leave. And even our domestic players, they cannot compete if they have the, if their power cost is so high. So uh, we have to send a message that we have to get that gas. If you don't want uh, the Americans to put up additional EDCA sites, Yes, we can stop that, but you have to give us our gas. Right, we are just developing a leverage now, and I think we mm. we still have to develop more leverage. Uh, you know, leverage in terms of you know telling the Chinese that you know um we, we have our options also uh in terms of yeah because access in Edka, et cetera. Uh, yeah, yeah, these Edka sites uh will will uh will. Uh, will give us also a leverage with respect to the Americans. We will tell the Americans, you have to accompany us when we go to Reed Bank to survey and drill, just like what you did for Malaysia and Indonesia. So then it's a dual purpose. We use this uh, to tell China, if you don't want these at the sites, okay, but give us our gas, don't, don't prevent us. And for the Americans, we're giving you this EDCA sites, additional EDCA sites, but provide a joint patrol with us. Do a joint patrol with us when we go to Reed Bank. Because we are re really late. It takes about four years to develop Reed Bank. And, uh, and uh, we don't have the gas. We have three 
large gas-fired plants in Luzon. All of them were supplied by with gas from uh, Malampaya, but now only two can be supplied. And at the end of this year, only one can be supplied. That means we will have to import LNG for this uh, for for Which for these gas expensive. plants, and yeah. it's very expensive. So it, it the, the, that's the that's the way I look at it. Uh, we have to build up our leverage, and uh, it, it's a dual purpose. And 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 that's where your contention comes in. Uh, yung dahilan na si Marcos Jr. ay nag uh, pivot dun sa issue or recalibration yes. in West Philippines is really because, because he realized China is not going to budge on the real yeah. bank, recto bank issue. Yeah. Can you just imagine if? Uh, we do not get the gas in Red Bank. We have to import LNG. He will become very unpopular because inflation will go up. People now are he's he he has a two digit uh, drop in his ratings. It's because of inflation. Prices of goods are so high, and you can just imagine if we have to import all our uh, uh, we if we don't get gas from Alampaya and import all our LNG, inflation will go through the roof. He will become very unpopular. So it's a matter of political survival for his family that we should get the gas in Reed Bank. And the only country that can provide us with a military cover, naval cover, is the U.S. That's what happened in Malaysia. Malaysia uh, got a cover from both the Americans and the Australian warships. Indonesia got a cover from the U.S. Uh I think that's an important thing to mention as we go towards the uh, you know the the final part of our discussion. Isang oras na bilis na naman as as always, and I don't want to keep you too much uh, justice. Um, so your contention is that the reason why Malaysia, Indonesia, and to a certain degree even Vietnam are not having as much problem is because in their own time, a lot of that during Duterte time, they held their ground, right? Whether this is the West Capella, Petronas. A unilateral drill by by Malaysia from 2019 until 2020 2021. Whether this is Indonesian President Jokowi going to North Natuna Sea and drawing the line and saying there will be no compromise, or Vietnam and their thousand years of struggle against China. So, ang um, so it looks like our reading here is that the reason why China is so bullying us right now is because um they feel they can impose their will on us in ways that. They can they cannot on our neighbors. Okay, with our neighbors, they're eventually accepting a kind of a fragile status quo and investing in those countries. At tanggap nila hindi naman uh, hindi naman pushovers mayan. So maybe they think we are pushovers because of the yes. Duterte era. Yeah, that, that, that's correct. Because during the time of Duterte, Duterte was subservient, obsequiously subservient to China. He said, "I love President Jinping. He doesn't want to displease. He barred our our navy from patrolling the EZ." So. China got used to that, and China wants that to be the status quo. That's the status quo that Harry Rocker is saying. We don't want that kind of status quo. So uh, now that we are asserting our sovereign rights, uh, China is, of course, uh, reacting. But we cannot be the, the odd man out here. Everybody gets their gas except us. Why? Because we are stupid. We, we 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 knelt before China. Uh, Duterte said, "I love President Xi Jinping." How can you say that when President Xi Jinping says you cannot get your gas? That's ours. How can he still love President Xi Jinping? Right. So uh, we have to correct that. And uh, and uh, President Marcos Jr. His political survival depends on that also. So he has no choice really. Um, therefore, uh, we, we don't want to give him also too much of a credit, right? Because this is also a question of Marcos looking for its own interest, knowing what what's 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 in store. Um, just just uh, for the last part here. Um, would it be enough joint patrols with the United States? I mean, to what degree do you think the Chinese will? I mean, dito sa ayong insol kasi may nakabala na yung situation, eh, di ba? Naging lethal na almost. Etong I mean, yeah. people could get killed with the the water pressure they're using. Kung tumama yan, nabangga ka, patay ka, di ba? If not directly even, yung, yung parang punching power ng sampung Pacquiao yata yan eh. Um, yeah. So we're already in this very serious situation here where China is really tightening the news. Is joint patrols uh, going to do it? I mean, shouldn't there be something more drastic, aggressive? I mean, 
um i mean joint uh i mean i don't know like while the philippines is doing resupply should there be american warships just over the horizon or drones i mean what are we looking at here um realistically well uh we have to prioritize uh i think in joint patrol in reed bank uh, it's there's no question that it's totally underwater even at high a low tide you don't see anything so we should prioritize that uh, we have joint patrol the us has offered to have joint patrol there and many countries has offered have offered to have joint patrol and they will because they did that for malaysia and indonesia with whom they don't even have a mutual defense treaty now uh, you can show is special because uh, it's uh, low tide and uh, very near mischief reef and uh, uh, the you know it's a matter of pride for ourselves that we should be able to resupply our own uh, we, it should be the last resort we should do everything uh, to do it on our own before we ask the us to to jointly patrol at the time we deliver the supplies uh, i think uh, we're not yet there uh, we can uh, we can still deliver uh, although we get uh, hit uh, but i think priority is to get the gas and then we can talk sit down with americans i like that statement of uh, the us admiral before the us congress that yeah, the use john of water Aquilino. cannon yeah john Aquilino. Yes, if uh, if somebody dies if uh, coast guard personnel dies uh, because of a water cannon then that is we can invoke the treaty let's magnify that let's put that as a as the uh, interpretation of uh, what is an armed attack we let's uh, use that so that it sends a message to china you cannot do that because we will invoke already because china doesn't want us to invoke the treaty because if the us goes there they really cannot do anything i mean uh they have a how many they have about 450 nuclear weapons the us is uh, 5500 they will be buried they know that they can they cannot afford to go to an all out war so their strategy is just to intimidate us and they you think the Americans are all, yeah, but, but yeah. just as, of course, the counter question: Do you think the Americans are also willing to to push the envelope uh, on this? Yes, issue? the Americans did it for Malaysia, for Indonesia, and the credibility of the U.S. is at stake here, and that's why every time they're here and official, they repeat that uh, the MDT military Ministry applies to the West Philippine Sea, including the Coast Guard. So they, they they're really trying to recover their credibility because they really botch it botch it in uh, Scarborough yeah, Shoal. Yeah, exactly. yeah, they wobbled. Their knees wobbled in Scarborough Shoal. And, and during your time also, hit. right? Uh, in Mischief. Yes. They also yeah, didn't help us. They also didn't help us. Yeah. So now they're trying to recover and we can take advantage of that. But we know that we're not going, we don't want to go to war. We just want to get our natural, our oil and gas. We, we don't want to go to war with China. That's crazy. We want to get our gas. And that's our right. That's our legal right under international law. So essentially the argument here is that China doesn't want war, the Philippines doesn't want war, the US doesn't want war. But the fact of the matter is that if we don't fight our own fight, then US is not going to help us. And if US doesn't help us, then China is not going to respect yes. us. Right? I mean, that's essentially the logic here, right? Yeah. Yes, that's the bottom line. So the US will help us if we, if we help ourselves. We cannot tell the US go get the gas for us. No, we have to go there. They will help us. They will protect us. But we have to do our part. And, we, and you know, we have really to increase our, our naval strength, our air force, our military, because for them, they really spend a lot on their military. And if they see their def mutual defense partners refusing to spend anything and relying on them completely, that's terrible. I mean, they will lose, I mean, they, they wouldn't want to help us. Yeah, I mean, especially if someone like, I don't know, Trump comes back to the White House. I'm, I'm in South <laughs> Carolina right now. I'm sure a lot of people here are excited for Trump 2.0. So, you no, know, I'm, I'm wondering, what are we going to do once, once Trump comes back? And so these are some of the conversations I'm going to have with folks here in South Carolina before heading to the blue states <laughs> in the coming days. You, you, but you know, Richard, uh, <laughs> the U.S. has been an isos isolationist before World War One. And it can happen again. Exactly. And they that's have why that we have to. 
Yeah, I mean, we cannot take for for granted that U.S. will be there all the time, that the Mutual Defense Treaty will all be there all of the time. We have to prepare for the day when the U.S. may get fed up spending their resources on defending areas far beyond their shores. So we, we really have to prepare for that day. Just last point, uh, Justice Scorpio. Um, what is... What keeps you awake at, at late at night? The Timoha presidential question. Do you fear that there could be? I mean, obviously, your contention, which I agree with, and, and even Deng Xiaoping, the wiser Chinese leader, said it. These are intergenerational struggles. But but are you concerned that there could be some stupid mistake, especially we, you know, some 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 uh, smart guys there in China trying to look like a hero? I mean, are you worried about the kind of an accidental clashes and escalation? Accordingly, as President Marcos also mentioned in a recent interview with Bloomberg. Well, uh, I think the probability of an accidental skirmish of war is very low because everybody knows the consequences. The U.S. doesn't, do, uh, we don't want war. China doesn't want war. It, in fact, the, the entire strategy of China, the warfare strategies, they will not fire a single shot. They will just intimidate so everybody knows uh, that you cannot cross that because uh, everybody loses, and the the most uh, and China will lose more because militarily they will they are far behind the U.S. still. No, so uh, I I don't lose so much uh, sleep over that, but I lose sleep over the possibility that we will miss the chance to get the gas in Reed Bank because of fear, because we allow ourselves to be intimidated, because that has happened in the last six years. That's a very good point of us uh, shooting ourselves in the foot or allowing ourselves to be intimidated, because I think a big part of the pro-China vloggers and disinformation campaign in the Philippines is to raise the fear of war, essentially to cower us into submission, which Duterte did many times. And I found it always interesting because there's always this discussion of China as a peaceful country, harmonious, charot, charot, taban, tapos war agad. <laughs> like, this is always yes. I think, the, 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 the weird part about that kind of uh, they, narrative. Of this they keep repeating the Chinese uh, propaganda, which is a lie, no? that China never invaded a country before. Throughout history, they've been invading. They tried to invade Japan twice, but failed. Yeah. They, they invaded Korea. They took a large chunk of uh, Korea. They invaded uh, Tibet and took over Tibet. They invaded Xinjiang. They they invaded uh, uh, Vietnam, the uh, yeah. Vietnam several times, and yeah. Vietnam for a thousand years fought them on and off. Yeah, I mean Xinjiang and, uh, literally also meets in the, the Himalayas. Yeah, I mean in Nepal, I... in in uh, Bhutan, in, and they even invaded Southeast Asia. They invaded Java during the Indonesia, time yeah. of the Majapahit Empire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the Yuan dynasty. Of course, uh, I'm first they, they, will say they these are the Mongolians. The not us. Sea. <laughs> yeah, they invaded the West Philippine Sea. They mm. invaded the Paracels. They invaded the, uh, well, of course, the, uh, uh, the, the Vietnamese fought them for a thousand years on and off. Yeah, I mean, uh, I always say to the people, do you think that China just dropped from the sky? How do you think they became so big? I mean, it started with a few kingdoms in the Yellow River and all, and next thing you know, it's a gigantic continental-sized nation. That didn't come up peacefully. I think people forget the warring states period and the whole, you know, romance of tricking. Um, now, last, pinaka last, uh, Justice Gar, what gives you hope? Is there is uh, What gives you a sense of confidence, aside from the fact that hindi na si Digong yung presidente, Although one of the things that keep us awake at night is the fear of another Duterte coming back from Malacanang. But yes, that's putting true. that aside like for a moment, um, what gives you a lot of hope or at least a lot of a sense of momentum that we're moving in the right direction? Well, uh, we, we have... Uh, I have always uh, advocated for joint patrols and uh, we enlarge our uh, visiting forces agreement uh, with other countries and it's happening. We're going to have that with uh, Japan. Uh, UK and uh, France are also offering. Uh, we have to have a network of allies, not necessarily mutual defense, but allies that will help us in peacetime because mutual defense is really wartime. But in peacetime, you have to 
show your strength also. Uh, and we're doing that. We're, I think we are in the right direction. And uh, Justice Scorpio, are you also happy about, you know, the direction of in terms of, yes, I mean, there's the disinformation, there's all of that. But my my my, my thing is, I think that's because something good is happening, right? I think they're they're realizing na namumulatan namumulatan taong bayan, no? Na people are beginning to appreciate and understand how important the stakes are dito sa West Philippine City. Yes, uh, I think we we uh, we're raising the awareness, the level of understanding of our people. We just have to keep on talking and explaining. On that note, thank you very much, uh, Justice Carpio, former Justice Carpio, Associate Justice Carpio, for joining us. Also, my fellow, of course, columnist at, at the Philippine Daily Inquirer. I hope, Justice, we can have more of you. And then, of course, to plug it in, we also had an even more extensive discussion on, on yes. my show, The View from Manila on One News. So watch out also for that uh, later this month. Thank you so much, Justice Carpio. Mabuhay ka. And uh, hopefully, hindi kayo masawa sa amin. <laughs> yeah. Anytime, Richard. And thank you for inviting me. And thank you to our viewers. God bless you. Have a good day, sir. <laughs> Bye. Bye.